Hey, Artie and Tobery friends. Today we are going to take a look at Kuratake's Brilliant Gold Ink, Gold Mica. And I picked this up at my local calligraphy store, Paper and Ink Arts. And as you can see, I paid $11.95 for it. So you guys can see, this is a shrink-wrapped bottle of gold ink. It is pigment-based, and you can hear the shaker rattling around inside. This brilliant gold ink is perfect for writing with a brush, and bright colors stand out especially on dark papers. Please note, shake well before use until the marbles inside make sounds. <laughs> Not intended for use for uh, intended for use by children. Do not leave the product where it will be exposed to high temperatures or direct sunlight, or where there is a risk of freezing. Replace cap firmly after use. Do not mix with any other ink. Use only for intended purpose. Dropping or strong impact may result in damage to the bottle. And it is made by Kuratake, and it is water-based pigment. So let's go ahead and get this puppy open. I've tested a few gold inks here on this channel. Um, up until today, my favorite has been Winsor & Newton's gold ink. And I really like that it's a solvent-based gold ink, so it has kind of a smell to it. And it's really, really gold. And you can burnish it to like a flat gold surface, or you can leave it unburnished so that it kind of sparkles. And what makes it really impressive is it has brass particles in it. But I've reviewed quite a few shiny, sparkly things, so this will not be the first. We're going to test today on Strathmore's Visual Journal. This is watercolor paper. And I have handy a cup of water. So first things first, we're going to open it up. Admire the beautiful gold. Ooh, it does smell like it has some solvent. Don't whiff this, obviously. But I wanted to see if it was like the Windsor and Newton. Alright, so unlike the Windsor and Newton, which I need to buy a new bottle of it because it's mine is just about died. It's <laughs> it's turned green. It is very, very light. I'm going to just kind of create a test area here. I don't have any black paper handy, but I can make some using this pigment base Pentel. So we're going to let this cure for five minutes. We're going to come back and swatch over on this. This gold takes longer than I expected it to. Let's go ahead and try it on the black. It takes longer to dry, rather, than I expected it to. In fact, it's still wet up there. All right, so this is our, our gold on dark paper. Our, our gold is an accent. Our gold is a highlight. There is really not a lot of opacity here. Yeah, you can layer it, but it's really, really, it's just really faint. Not, I was really hoping for like a nice concentrated gold, like Windsor Newton's gold. So, I have here my Kuratake Starry Colors. These are Gansai style watercolors. So it's another Kuratake product. I thought we could kind of compare the two. I've already done an unboxing swatch for these. But I figure, you know, while I'm while I'm talking about one, I might as well talk about the other, right? Plus they were fairly handy. 
what I want to find out is can I get these starry colors more opaque than I was able to get the Kuratake Gold ink. So I'm going to let this cure for about five minutes and then I'll come back. So the Gold Mica ink really takes a long time to dry. Still drying. Um, it does actually dry a little bit more opaque. Leaves kind of a pretty golden shimmer. So next up we have the starry colors. I also found a bunch of other gold watercolors. Well, gold and silver watercolors or acrylic inks or what have you. And uh, since so many artists enjoy using gold and silver as part of their Inktober illustrations, I thought I would go ahead and swatch those as well. So I'm trying to get as opaque a layer as possible. So that was white gold. I was also looking for my fine tech watercolors. I had to look harder because those actually have some really decent gold. And I don't think I've actually done too much in the way of comparison with those, despite using them pretty frequently. So I think rather than doing all this in one video, I'll finish up with the Kuratake and then I'll do a new video where I compare gold inks since that's probably a topic a lot of people are interested in. And with the starry colors, it definitely helps to pre-activate them. That way you can get a thicker glaze of color than you would be able to get otherwise. And that just means putting a few drops of water onto your pan. Oh, in terms of color, I would say the gold mica is the most similar to the yellow gold or the blue gold. It's kind of somewhere in between those two. But the uh, starry colors are a little bit, you're able to get a little more intense color than you are with the Kuratake gold mica. So if you're looking for a thick, intense gold, this is not for you. This is not what you're looking for. I would recommend you check out the Windsor Newton Gold, and I'll link both in the description. In fact, I'll link this as well as the Starry Colors in the description below. I wish I still had some of that gold so I could do a comparative swatch for you guys. Unfortunately, I don't. But I do have some other videos where I use it, so I will link that. I'll link one of them here for you guys to check out. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it was useful, and I hope it was informative. If you're looking for an opaque gold, the starry colors are more opaque than the gold mica, but the gold mica has a really nice kind of soft shine to it. So if you're looking to just add a little bit of gold, that could be the way to go for you. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys again really soon.